Tennessee, Dr. Desjardins. Good morning, Administrator Jackson and Deputy Secretary Hayes. I really appreciate your being here today. There are an awful lot of folks in Tennessee 4 that were obviously excited about you being here as well because I actually had several calls back from the district and we have questions that were sent in on Facebook and other mediums to uh, ask you. So uh, we do really appreciate you being here. Uh, one of the reasons I was sent to Congress was to help create jobs. And as part of our oversight committee, I have traveled Tennessee's 4th District over the past several months visiting businesses and industries and asking them what is standing in the way of job growth. And almost unanimously, uh, the, the number one thing that people were telling me was to get government out of the way. And not surprisingly, uh, Administrator Jackson, the EPA often comes up that uh, they feel that there are burdensome regulations that are preventing job creation. Now, uh, when, when we started here earlier today, the ranking member uh, cited the Gulf oil spill, which was obviously very tragic, and he said that it was our job and your job to never, ever, ever, never, never, ever allow that to happen again. Do you feel if you had unlimited uh, power that you could prevent that from never, ever happening again? No, sir, I can't guarantee that. Okay. Well, how, how good are you guys? Because there is an awful lot of uh, power and, and uh, uh, rules and regulations that are being levied on our businesses here that seem to be prohibiting job growth. Uh, do, you, do you feel like the EPA is doing a good job? In general, yes. One, one of the reasons I don't believe I could guarantee that is because EPA does not primarily regulate the safety of offshore drilling. So there is nothing within EPA's authority that speaks to whether or not those rigs are safe. I think the Deputy Secretary has spoken to that this morning. Well, just out of curiosity, because we had uh, Secretary of Labor here on an earlier hearing, and, and they were citing the mining accident in West Virginia that took so many lives. And I had asked uh, over the past 10 years if they could show me an improved safety record because of their inspections and the fines that they levy, because they do go into these uh, mines and, and levy fines for any number of things. And then when they leave, I assume that they are satisfied that the mine is safe. But then there is a disaster, and uh, it is always the mine's fault. It is not the MSHA's fault. If there is a disaster uh, within the environment, does the EPA take responsibility? Do they feel accountable for that? No, in general in this country, the belief is that the polluter is responsible and it is the job of the regulatory agency to set the, the rules of the game, if you will, and to enforce them so there is a level playing field. So. Okay. Well, I get the impression from the folks that I am talking to <coughs> excuse me, that if you are going to wield that much power, then maybe you ought to take some responsibility as well. So that is just the opinion that I get. But <coughs> the uh, Folks that are engaged in calling in, I did want to get a couple of their questions in. The Oversight Committee Chairman reads our mission state statement before each hearing, and our goal is to work with citizen watchdogs to deliver more efficient, effective government that works for taxpayers, businesses, and their families. Many Americans are concerned that the EPA's mission seems to be pitted against efficiency and effectiveness. We invited you here today, and we will invite you back, to give you a chance to show the taxpayers otherwise. This is your chance. Ellen Weatherill, one of our citizen watchdogs from Facebook, wants to know, is the goal of the EPA to protect the environment or to drive up fuel costs in order to force Americans to modify their behavior? Our mission is to protect human health and the environment, sir. Okay. I hope she is satisfied with that answer. Uh, not only does EPA regulation attempt to enact a cap-and-trade scheme that couldn't even pass both Democrat-controlled houses of Congress, preventing the private sector from creating good jobs, but no U.S. cap-and-trade plan would solve the massive pollution generated by growing industri industrial countries. This fact is not lost on America. Citizen watchdog Gary DeLong from Facebook wants to know, why is cap-and-trade viable, viable when in a few short years India and China will produce significantly more air pollution and cannot and will not be held accountable despite anything done by America? Well, please assure your constituent that EPA is not implementing a cap-and-trade program, but uh, you might also, and, and I am happy to speak to him as well, uh, mention to him that uh, market-based programs have been used successfully in this country to control other pollutants such as SO2, the prime contributor to acid rain. Okay, I want to get in one more. I am trying to help these folks okay. out. Um, <laughs> citizen watchdog Melody McMahon 
Worthington from Facebook wants to know, why do we support the subsidizing of drilling in Brazil and hamstring our companies here at home? Um, I, I do not know that we support the subsidizing of drilling in Brazil. That is outside my area of expertise. The and President mentioned that uh, that was he was looking forward to being a major importer. And I am about out of time, so I will go ahead and yield back. Thank you for answering those questions.